What's going on fam? It's your boy Albu. If it's your first time to the channel, man, make sure you guys go ahead and support the boy and subscribe and tap the notifications below to get updated on all the latest videos that we're doing. And don't forget guys, make sure you guys are liking the video and all YouTube algorithm and helping our channel grow. So with that being said, let's get into it. So on authorized collections, what are they? How do we get them removed? How do we actually use the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in order to get them removed? Say if you guys are a victim of identity theft or collections pop off your credit file, then this is actually gonna be considered an unauthorized collection. Collection. So the easiest way you guys can ever have a collection and never show up on your credit report is to simply pay them people. So just making sure that you guys are paying your bills on time is the easiest way to never get a collection on your credit file. But there are instances where basically you don't know where the collection is coming from or you've never had a bill with a certain collector. So with that being said, it'll pop up on your credit file, probably shock your credit score, dropping it down anywhere from 20 to 40 points, depending on where your credit sat beforehand. So you guys can see how big of a factor this is. And it'll also prevent you guys from being able to actually get funding for your business or even your personal. So with that being said, getting an unauthorized collection is super important that we get it taken care of right away. And with credit, I want you guys to be able to always look at your credit just like your bank account. I know I say this all the time, but make sure you guys are constantly checking your credit file because at any point in time, an unauthorized collection or any type of derogatory items can fall on your credit file. So it's important that you guys are monitoring it because what you don't manage, you can't monitor, right? Because what you don't manage, you cannot change. So if you guys did find a collection, don't recognize where it's coming from, then we actually use this method with the CFPB. What the CFPB is, is simply the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So this is the regulatory agency that oversees all of the credit bureaus. It's almost like Big Brother in an instance, right? They actually play the middleman. So let's say you guys got in a fight, right? Say if you guys got beat up and it wasn't a fair fight and whatever, man, I don't want to hear excuses. But anyways, if you guys go ahead and uh, basically go out there, get beat up, basically you'll go ahead and call your big brother. I know I wouldn't, but follow me for the scenario, right? So you guys get beat up, you guys go ahead and call your big brother to go ahead and handle the beef or whatever it may be. So that's simply what the CFPB does. They play the middleman between you and also the credit bureaus. So whenever the credit bureaus are basically verifying and you guys are disputing, 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 and you're not getting anywhere, what we actually do is go ahead and file a CFPB complaint. Now, I know you guys are asking like, a boo, like complaints never do anything with businesses. I mean, for the credit bureaus, they do, brother. So complaints on the corporate level are taken very seriously because of the fact the credit bureaus, they don't want to get sued, they don't want to get fined, and those fines are are really hefty they're like five even six figure fines so they have to make sure that they're playing the game correctly so a lot of times whenever you guys do get a collection or any type of debt collection agency you must follow what we call the fdcpa it's going to cover all of the different collection agencies and all the practices that they should be following in order to go ahead and report any type of collection to your account in order for that debt collection to pop up on their credit file so there are very strict stipulations with the fdcpa that collection agencies must follow in order to accurately report it onto your credit file most of the times collections are never signed by you. So that's why we're able to get unauthorized collections removed off your credit file. I'm gonna show you guys why filing a CFPB complaint can be able to expedite your process in getting those collections removed right away. So the CFPB takes around 14 days after you initially file a complaint. They'll go ahead and send out the complaint to the actual credit bureau or the collection agency and get that removed. So the burden of proof lies on the collection agency. So in order for a collection to be valid, that collection agency must have a legal signed contract from the consumer that they're putting on their credit report and a lot of times that's not the case so a lot of these collection agencies man they just buy it by the boatloads they'll buy a bunch of collections from certain lenders such as chase wells fargo bank of america any of them right and so they'll go ahead and buy a big portfolio and they'll basically go ahead and get minimal information as far as the consumer and so that's why they're calling you guys in order to actually bind you guys to a verbal contract so they can be able to legally put that collection on your credit report if you guys have ever tried to sue a collection agency and nine times out of ten they're gonna most likely lose because they don't have any type of signed contracts from the actual consumer. So that's why it's really important whenever you guys are disputing it to make sure that you guys hold the collection agency accountable. So really what I wanna show you guys is a CFPB complaint that we actually do in order to be able to remove any unauthorized collections. So let's go ahead and hop on the laptop right now. I'll walk you guys through this on how to be able to get those unauthorized collections removed. All right guys, so if you guys can see the screen, this is the consumer financial protection bureau this is going to be your best friend in being able to get anything removed off your credit file especially with those uh collections that you guys have is unauthorized we're going to go to submit a complaint and what you guys should do is be able to actually start a new complaint and you want to have a login right so i'm going to go ahead and log in real quick and i'll see you guys um, i already have a login but if you don't I'm just going to go ahead and fill out all this information right here and then make sure you guys have access to your email of course um, i'll give you guys a verification and then you guys should be able to go ahead and go into this
So I'm going to go ahead and sign in real quick and I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys. So after you guys went ahead and actually made an account, right? And then you actually got into the actual portal. What you actually want to do is basically go ahead and click submit the complaint. So you guys can see submit a complaint. And so as we see right here, we have check in, we have mortgage, credit card. So you guys can literally use a CFPB for anything as far as credit related, any student loans, vehicle loans or leases, um, debt collection. The CFPB simply just put, bro, like it's honestly just to be able to actually go ahead and keep the credit bureaus. So honestly, any lender that is basically reporting credit will fall under the CFPB as far as like the regulatory agency. So the CFPB regulates everything. So just make sure you guys know that. Now what we're gonna do right is gonna be debt collection because remember we have a collection that's unauthorized. And so as you see right here, that's gonna be auto debt, credit debt, federal student loan debt. Now if it's unauthorized, you wouldn't really know what type of debt it is, right? So for the most part, what we're gonna put is um, I don't know. So you don't know what type of debt it is because it's unauthorized. Then you never, if you never signed a contract with a collection agency, then most of the time it's going to be unauthorized. So just make sure you guys keep in track of that. So um, just put, I don't know. That's the easiest way that we do it. Um, as far as being able to say, I don't know. And then what we're going to do right here is, so you have attempts to collect debt not owed, electronic communications, communication tactics. But we actually, uh, what we actually should put is going to be attempts to collect debt not owed. Because remember, you don't owe this debt. So so basically his debt was paid, discharged in a bankruptcy, resolved by any theft. So any of those that fall under that guidelines, so you guys can be able to click this one for this. And now I'll give you specifics on exactly what um what category you fall under. So we actually put the debt is not yours because the debt is unauthorized, so the debt is not yours. So have you guys already tried to fix this problem with the company? Um usually I'll just say um yes, you'll try to like reach out to them, but so have you ever tried to fix this problem with the company? Um, no, because I don't really know what the company's from, right? And then just click no. And after this, so this is going to be like the category to fall under, which you, where you're selecting which type of specifics your complaint falls under. And so right here, it says, describe what happened. We'll send your comments to the companies involved. So how the CFPB works, it's almost like a middleman. So it's almost like Big Brother, right? So you're basically um, fighting with somebody else, right? And so you're fighting with the credit bureaus, for example, and you might have lost or um, somebody might have beat you up, for example. So you're going to call your Big Brother or whatever may be to go ahead and handle the situation now don't get me in trouble but handling situation can mean anything so uh basically this is just kind of like the middleman so they're going to basically send out all the information that you're telling them right now and it's going to have a lot more weight because it's going to be the cfpb so the credit bureaus must respond in a timely manner it is big brother and the last thing that the credit bureaus don't want to have is to get fined so those fines especially on corporate level they're anywhere from twenty thousand to fifty thousand. don't quote me on that but um fines for corporations are a lot heftier than any type of uh, consumer fines. So we're going to put right. So I actually have pre-made templates that I actually use. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and then we'll be right back. So what we're going to put right here is describe what happened and we'll send your comments to the company involved. So remember, I know like some people tell you guys to put the account number, but um, it obviously says right here, don't include personal information such as your account number address. What you want to use is you want to use like lawyer language. You want to use a language that a lawyer would kind of state. So this is what we put right. This debt collector engaged in abusive, deceptive and unfair practices of the FDCPA, which prohib which it prohibits. So they furnished this account that we didn't agree upon and I didn't sign any agreement, which is true, right? Because a lot of times like with the collection agencies, um, especially if it's unauthorized, you never signed an agreement with them. So they're trying to collect on a debt that you never even agreed on. So that's a violation right there. So a legal contract is signed by two parties and I did not participate in any of it. So what participation means is that you didn't benefit from it, right? So you didn't get a car, you didn't get a house, you didn't get any type of monetary relief for it. So you didn't participate in it because you were the, never the one that benefited from this actual collection. So that's why you didn't participate in it. So more so they didn't follow the proper five-step validation procedure which makes this unfair practices. So anytime a collection agency or just any debt collector, so they must actually follow a certain procedure based off of the FDCPA before they go ahead and actually put it on your credit file. So I know in a previous video, you guys should definitely go check that one out. I actually broke down like the no parking rule, which is part of the permissible purpose. So permissible purpose is basically your right as a consumer before anybody pulls your credit report or puts anything on your credit report, they must send you guys um, any type of correspondence within 14 days so if they send any type of correspondence within 14 days and it comes back to them undeliverable then they can technically not put on the credit report and if they do that's a violation you guys can go ahead and sue and go ahead and get your money man so with that being said right there's about a five-step validation procedure i won't go into the full depths of exactly what it is but um yeah just read up the fdcpa and you guys should be able to know exactly 
what any debt collector needs to do before they put it on your credit file. So, and then lastly, according to the FDCPA, I'm entitled to a thousand dollars per violation. And clearly they violated my rights. As you guys can see, like all of this kind of just boils up. So whenever you guys are doing CFPB complaints, you guys want to start stacking up those violations. The more violations that you guys have against that company, the better your results will be. You want to show without a reasonable doubt that they actually violated your rights. And so adding more violations just gives you guys more leg room to be able to ask for more money later on. So, and again, it's a thousand dollars per violation. So if they violated, you guys um, violated about five rights, then it's going to be a $5,000 that you guys are basically entitled to. So as long as you guys win in court, of course. So, so I want the CFPB to publish this description on consumerfinance.gov. I don't put this brother, like I actually don't put it at all because I don't want anybody else knowing my business. So, and then what would be a fair resolution to this issue? So let's go ahead and go back. So this is kind of a response that our lawyer would use. And again, making sure that you guys are using the right verbiage is super important, especially when dealing with the credit bureaus or the credit reporting agencies, because the FCRA, FDCPA, they don't mention them as the credit bureaus. They mention them as the credit reporting agencies. So making sure you guys have your verbiage correct is going to be able to help you guys get better results because it's going to be a lot more tailored to the actual laws, right? And so, and it's not going to leave any type of room for interpretation. So right here, we're going to put is I demand this company to delete this account from all three three credit reporting agencies and compensate me for the violations or I'll have no choice but to forward this to my litigation attorney. So the last part right here, as far as forward this to my litigation attorney. So again, it's going to be an attorney that will basically follow a lawsuit on your behalf. So this right here is just kind of like gassing it, giving a little bit more gas to the fire, man. And it's kind of showing them that you guys mean business. <laughs> and so right here, like if you guys sent out any documentation to the credit reporting agencies, go ahead and attach this, like your social security, your actual driver's license, and also the dispute letter um and if you have any correspondence other than that definitely include it because now is definitely the time so speak now forever hold your peace man because trust me guys creditors or debt collection agencies they don't take you seriously until you guys actually start you know what i mean taking it up a notch and at the end of the day they won't care if it's unauthorized or not so you guys have to be able to be the one that takes charge and so right here we have the company name so um any we can put any company that you guys have so if you guys see the collection on your credit file let's say it says midland funding right so what we'll do is um, file one with midland uh whatever credit management midland funding llc so you want to pick this one right here midland funding llc so whatever it actually states on your actual credit report like they should be at the bottom of it especially if you guys are checking experian or even identity iq it'll list all of the different furnishers and a furnisher is anybody that puts anything on your credit file so if it's a collection agency they'll put their name um their address and also their phone numbers so just use that actual name to be put on the cfpb now, if the name's not on there, what you guys can do is file a BBB complaint, but we'll go more in depth into that in a later video. And you want to put your account number. I don't recommend you guys put your social security number uh, just because like you don't want to have that attached to be able to send over to the credit. I actually don't recommend you guys put your social security number because again, like the whole burden of proof should be on the collection agency. So if they have your information, they should be the ones providing it. But an account number should be sufficient enough for them to actually find exactly what account you're talking about. Now, if you guys don't have any other collection agencies that are on your report, then you just put no, I don't know. So one tip that I actually want to give you guys is whether if you guys are doing a CFPB complaint, I like to separate all my CFPB complaints because it makes it a lot easier to manage. And also it lets like the CFPB kind of be a lot more diligent in handling one case at a time rather than trying to handle like three or four different cases. Even if you guys are having four or five different collection agencies, I would actually go ahead and do a separate CFPB complaint for each and every single one of them. So then after that, we're going to go to next. And of course, like we'll just put something in for the account number. Boom. And then we'll go to next. So right here, what we're going to do is you're going to click submitting complaint. It's going to be for yourself. And then you're going to enter all your contact information that you actually signed up for. Make sure to put your address and also uh, basically your zip code, stuff like that. And then, of course, going to go into the, uh, the demographics. It's not really important. As you can see, they're all optional uh, for the most part. And it really doesn't matter to like to me. I don't really put this at all because it doesn't really matter and it's optional. So they should know exactly who you're talking about as long as you guys have your account set up properly and also have the account number. Then of course, they'll have your household, including total number of adults and children, which again is optional, combined household income, optional, um, service member status, optional. And after that, you're gonna go to review. It'll give you guys a printed out copy as far as like the review copy. 
you guys will need before you submit and so again make sure you guys review this complaint right make sure you review it make sure everything is right the the sections the categories you guys pick and then also the problem you're having and then make sure your step three is accurate it has everything that you guys have listed and if you attach any documents make sure that they attach properly and so again the company name is correct and so yeah for the most part that's pretty much it uh, CFPB complaint is not done until you guys go ahead and click this information is given true to the best of my knowledge and belief and so I understand that CFPB cannot act as my lawyer a court of law or a financial advisor so you click that just to give the CFPB authorization and you're gonna boom submit your complaint and you're good to go so that's pretty much it for the CFPB as far as unauthorized collections in later videos I'll break down other CFPB complaints that I usually do um, for any type of charge-offs things type of late payments or anything but just know that CFPB you can pretty much use for anything on your credit report so for example if you, so if you guys are having issues with any type of account where you feel like your rights are violated and the credit reporting agencies are not removing it then just go ahead and file a cfpb complaint um usually what i like to do right is send over my documentation to the credit reporting agencies first and then actually do a cfpb so once the credit reporting agencies receive your information then you guys go ahead and do a cfpb complaint so super hack man i hope this was really helpful and yeah it's pretty much it for the cfpb complaint right here as far as unauthorized collections all right guys so i gave you guys all the game and the gems on how to actually file the cfpb complaint step by step so i really hope this is helpful man so having a cfpb complaint is just one of those tools in your toolbox that you guys can be able to use in order to expedite the process so make sure you guys don't send over the complaint before you send over any correspondent letters to the credit bureaus because it needs to go hand in hand with both so with that being said use those cfpb complaints make sure you guys check your account and you guys should receive an email from the cfpb complaint now if the cfpb CFPB says that the complaint is closed. Don't worry. If they haven't had a resolution, they're still working on it, but they usually close out cases in order for the system to generate. If you guys found this video helpful, man, make sure you guys share this with at least five of your friends so we can all grow together. And I really appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, all that, man. And I'll see you guys at the top, my boy. Let's get it.